What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. So a couple of days ago, I released a video that was basically just me giving my thoughts on Terrastalization and, you know, Terror Blast and all these different little mechanics that we we're going to experience in Generation 9. Now, since then, we've gotten a little bit of news and that came in the form of um, some pre-release, like early access to the game. Like some people got to play for an hour or two. Uh, and that was actually really interesting because uh, my good friend Sierra Dawn actually got to play the game a bit early and did confirm that the base power of Terra Blast is going to be 80. Beyond that, we were wrong about how uh, terrestrialization works. So before we get into that, you know, do me a favor. If you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content focused on VGC. A lot of people are thinking I'm playing like Smogon. So, you know. I like Smogon, I play Smogon, I, I, I respect every Smogon player, but I'm a VGC channel, so keep in mind my discussion does revolve around that. That being said, I do appreciate all the recent subs. We grew by about 2,000 subs in the past week, which is absolutely absurd, but yeah, let's keep it up. I'm shooting for 100,000, but let's go ahead and get into it. So like I said, terrestrialization works a bit different than we um, than we imagined. So previously, we were under the impression that, ter that terrestrialization would change your typing to whatever Terra type you had, right? So with Salamence, I'm using, by the way, for all these examples, I'm using the Z crystals to represent like a, a Terra typing, just so you know. So we were under the impression that terrestrialization would change your type to that typing and then give you a, um, a boost exclusively to the stab that you have chosen. Alternatively, if you decided to Terra type into whatever typing you already had, whether, you know, if you're like a dual type, you know, dragon flying, uh, if you Terra, uh, what Terra, I almost said Terra evolve. If you terrestrialize into a pure flying type, when you already have flying, you get a multiplier of two times on that move rather than 1.5. However, however, as it turns out, you keep your original stab as well. So if you were to terrestrialize your Salamence into a Steel type, you have 1.5 times power on your Steel moves and on your Dragon moves and on your Flying moves. And if you were to terrestrialize your Dragonite into a Flying type, you would have 1.5 times on your Dragon moves and two times on your Flying moves. We're pretty sure it's two times. It seems to just be an adaptability boost. So keep that in mind with the discussion going forward. On top of that, some uh, further news that we got was that the base power of, uh, you know, Terra Blast is going to be 80, so that actually uh, clears up a lot, and in fact, it makes the move a little bit scary in my eyes. I was saying, hey, I hope this thing caps out like 80 base power max, but I was kind of hoping it would be 70. Uh, keep in mind that uh, in previous generations, we had access to a move called Hidden Power. Uh, now, Hidden Power was dependent on your Pokemon's IVs, so if you had like a, a Mega Alakazam and you wanted to go with like hidden power uh bug right not that you would ever run that but it would be 60 base power now the, the big difference between this and like terrestrialization is that terrestrialization is not only um 80 base power compared to the 60 but also when you terrestrialize into a certain type you get stab on that type meaning that rather than it being an 80 base power move it's going to be 120 effectively uh so yeah and Honestly, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I think it might just be a little bit too strong for me, but we're just gonna we're gonna have to see how the game shapes up. Um, but what I will say is that there is the downside of you have to terrestrialize. So uh, we, you know, everything has access to stab on whatever Terra type it's going to be. So if you want to be like, does this thing get fairy moves? I don't think this thing gets fairy. Yeah, if if I could spell fairy correctly, my bad. Yeah, if you want to be like a, a fairy. Hariyama, so we went like Hidden Power Fairy. Is Hidden Power Fairy even a thing? I don't think it is, actually. Let's say you're like Hidden Power Ghost, right? Now, if you wanted to have access to that ghost move with Terra Blast Ghost, you need to terrestrialize. whereas Hidden Power, you didn't need to do anything. You just always has you, you just always had access to that move. So here, there is a bit of a trade-off. Um, with that in mind, it actually means that running Terra Blast on a few Pokemon is going to be... A little bit risky right so let's say you build like a team of six let's just use these six for example right you're not gonna have Terra Blast on every single one of them because if you were to run Terra Blast on every single one of them that means that five of your Pokemon in any given game have an 80 base power normal move which is effectively useless uh, for, for a lot of cases right because you know you probably get access to like I don't know some other normal move body slam 85 base power it's it's not like a move you want to have so i kind of appreciate that 
Uh, but yeah, I figured what we would do is we would go through a couple of examples of some useful terra types that you might run into or maybe you want to like just, I, I don't know, I'm like theory crafting today. I want to talk about like now that we have this information, how can we effectively use terra typing? Um, and it does open the door to like defensive terra typing being a lot better than we had uh, initially imagined. Because before, when you would like terra type into something, it was a commitment. It was like, okay, you know, I'm going to change my type into something uh, and now I lose all offensive boosts on my original stab moves but now that we know that's not the case it's like just straight up benefits from defensive terror typing so with salamence let's say you want to run like a dragon dance dual wing beat dragon claw set um and you know let's let's give it like a life orb right so now like you're a very threatening pokemon at plus one especially if you're on like the moxie ability you can like take ko's but you can actually hold on to that uh terror typing until you need it um, so basically like let's say you have like two pokemon on the field like colossal and salamence and you're not sure which one you want to terrestrialize first, uh, or you're not sure which one you want to terrestrialize in this game, but then your opponent sends out uh, a Tapu Lele, and all of a sudden you realize, okay, yeah, that's a Scarf Tapu Lele, it's going to outspeed my Salamence and KO. Bam, defensive terror typing, the Salamence is now Steel type, and it resists those Fairy and Psychic moves. So this actually means that the Salamence can still do its job. It's still getting stab on Dual Wingbeat and Dragon Claw, but as a Steel type, it can now take on the Tapu Lele. That's kind of interesting right because i don't know it, it makes it so that way when you like go into every single match if you were to build like a team of six right so let's just i don't know let's just grab a random team and make a copy of it let's go with this one so let's say that i'm running this team in generation nine now when i'm going into a match i not only need to determine like what moveset i want to run but let's say i want to run this circuitry oh i don't want to get annihilated by uh ground pokemon so maybe it's optimal for my circuitry to be like obviously you wouldn't run like terra blast on this set but like you would want to be like um a flying type is your terra type because that means you can defensively become immune to moves and it's not really a trade-off you still keep like all of your original boost near moves but now you're just immune to those flying moves maybe uh clefairy since it's weak to poison mons wants to become a uh a steel type right like it, the list goes on and on like dragapult is obviously weak to like dragon ghost dark moves uh so while you could you know use it offensively on the defensive side why not turn your dragapult into a fairy type you know like there's a lot of options here and that's what like is kind of freaking me out because there's just another layer of things that you need to do in the team builder um and i'm not sure how that's going to affect like accessibility when it comes to building teams for generation 9 but it's something that we have to keep in mind you know uh that being said you know i, I feel like i keep going on these different tangents no, I, I, for the most part, I've been organized. You know, I was talking about like, you know, how Terra works now and, uh, you know, the defensive use cases. But now I feel like we can talk about Terra options that I didn't consider the first time. So with Colossal, I said, hey, you know, you always want to be a rock type because then you get a boost on your um, rock slide and you lose the weakness to the or the four times weakness to water moves. But now that we know you keep the stab on the original move set. That actually opens the door to having just like a ton of different options for your final move. So let's say you want to be like Terra. Um, well, obviously, this is like a steam engine situation. So we have the option of anything that's weak to water move. So we can turn into a ground type. And obviously, rather than uh, Terra Blast ground, you're going to want to run Earth Power because it's just a better move. So Colossal can now be a ground type, which is a little bit scary because hey, you know, now you're hitting rock types for super effective moves, or for super effective. Um, and yeah, it just means that you have stab on all three of these attacks and you're like a weakness Possimon. The real scary thing is now Regieleki. Now that we know like the base power of this sort of thing, Regieleki is probably going to want to run like Terra Ice and probably a lot of like non flying or levitating electric types are going to want to be Terra Ice. Uh, and the reason that's like especially scary for Regieleki is because Regieleki is somewhat busted in VGC. Uh, not like super, super busted, but it's like just above the busted threshold, you know, uh, with its like offensive sets. So the one way that you could get around that was Regieleki struggles to hit ground type Pokemon uh, like Landorus. Landorus is a hard Regieleki counter unless you were a madman and ran trick ring target to get rid of that uh, immunity to electric moves. But now uh, what I've done is I've taken HP Ice and changed its base power to 80. And we can actually see that if they're running like, you know, just max speed, max attack, 4 HP, Lander, Therian, you're getting one shot by HP Ice off of uh, Regieleki. And if they decide to run like a Life Orb, then that move just gets boosted in power again. Obviously, you know, as like a ground and flying type, you're probably not going to be 
you know, switching in on ice moves anyways, but just like general ground types now, Regieleki has the option to hit them. Uh, let's go with uh, Hippowdon. Hippowdon doesn't have like the best special defense stat, so this is actually pretty fair. So, you know, Life or Regieleki versus like max special defense Hippowdon can now actually deal a decent amount of damage. You're, you know, if they're not running like max special defense, let's say they're running like a uh, physically defensive set, bold, right? Well, not bold, obviously, you want that attack stat, but for the sake of just calcing quickly, you're dealing 60 to 71 with life orb and without life orb you're still dealing probably around like 50 percent yeah that's like a two shot so if you switch in on the hp ice expecting to take like a ground move or not the hp ice the terra blast ice please forgive me i'm gonna mess that up a lot in this video but if you switch in on the terra blast ice and they call that uh play correctly now you're gonna get like two shot and that's like the scary thing um as much as i like the defensive aspect of this the offensive aspect is a little bit scary, uh, especially when it comes to just being prepared for matches. Um, I will say what I said before, that as the meta develops, we will know what Pokemon wants to Terra type into what. And while it is another layer of the game to memorize uh, and learn about, uh, it, it is a little weird. What this does open the door for uh, is, you know, you can play optimally or you can play fun. Uh, and I know a lot of my viewers like to play fun. So I'm a big fan of like Absol, right? Absol, however, is unfortunately very outclassed by a little Pokemon named Urshifu because Absol tends to be a physical attacking dark type with 130 base attack that likes to crit. Urshifu is a physically attacking dark fighting type with 130 base attack, a higher speed, more stab moves and guaranteed crits. So it gets just straight up outclassed. But let's say that I wanna run Absol regardless. Now, I don't have to give up that um, that offensive dark coverage because dark is like a really, really good offensive typing. You have access to stab knockoff, sucker punch, etc. Now, if I wanted to, I could run play rough and fairy MZ and become a fairy type and then be able to probably just barely because of Absol's like absurdly low bulk, uh, eat a hit from the Urshifu and defeat it. So like Absol is one of these Pokemon that could turn into a different type and take advantage of it uh, in singles, I don't even know if Smogon's gonna, like, allow terrestrialization, to be honest. This feels like the sort of thing they might ban, but I don't really think so. It, it's, it's iffy, right? Um, and in a previous video, I had mentioned that Guts uh, Hariyama is actually especially scary because it can Terra-type into a normal Pokemon and get access to Stab on its uh, Guts-boosted Fake Out and its Guts-boosted Facade. And I said that was at the expense of having like a boost on your close combats. But now that I know that that's not the case, your close combats, your knockoffs, they're gonna hit like a like a truck. It's gonna be absurd. And, and you could actually turn, like this is the thing, right? There are a lot of Pokemon that want to turn into dark types with terrestrialization. Let me actually clear the board entirely. So there are lots of Pokemon that are like support Pokemon that have to be scared of uh, prankster taunt which is one of the best ways to deal with support pokemon so let's say that you're like uh, a tailwind uh setter let's go with um let's go with a uh, tornadus right where's regular tornadus i don't know let, let me just type it in let's say you're prankster tornadus and they send out a another prankster tornadus and they're like hey uh i know that my tornadus is faster than you so i'm gonna click taunt and then your tornado, this is like, okay, um, psych, I'm now a dark type and I'm immune to prankster non-damaging moves. You know, I can't be taunted by that. That's actually like kind of cool. That, that's another like reflexive thing that you can run. Uh, physical attackers. Let's go with like Mamoswine. Like, let's say you have like a choice banded Mamoswine. Uh, Mamoswine is the sort of Pokemon that can't be intimidated. So one of the most reliable ways to deal with that attack stat is to burn it so like prankster burn is an option you can turn yourself into a dark type or you can turn yourself into a fire type and then take advantage of like i don't know terrible ass fire which will allow you to now beat i guess you already beat ground and steel types um i don't know what else you beat ice congratulations you hit ice types now that's that's the crazy part but yeah i mean like this is just like my initial thoughts after getting this news uh from sierra and pldh shout out pldh the goat right next to Sarabi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give my thoughts on like this updated information on this mechanic. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Obviously, this wasn't like a very scripted video. I just wanted to sit down, talk about it, ramble a little bit. And yeah, obviously, I'm more interested in what you guys have to say. So comment down below what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.